Good evening, everyone. Good evening, greater new life. Good evening, greater new life. Let's bless the Lord tonight. <laughs> Come on, let's give us some praise, everybody. He woke us up this morning and brought us to 364 days of this year. Oh, what a privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord tonight on our last night service in this last night of 2021. Join with us as we begin our devotional service tonight. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my Oh, <laughs> 
God. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you continue to be with us. Never leave us, Lord God. Continue to guide us, Lord God. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that we are receptive on your sight, God. It is my all blessing to be asked in your Son, Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. call their name, they will be able to answer because life has expired from them. Amen. But isn't it good to know that God has allowed our golden moments to roll on just a little while longer? Amen. 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 And, and let, let's understand it's not because we've been so good now. Amen. It's yet because of his grace and his mercy. Amen. I have a few friends of mine who Pastor Church, and today kind of not a conference call, but we talked off and on. And I had two of my preacher friends ask me, "Well, we still gonna have watch night service?" I said, "Of course." Um, one of them said, "Well, we we decided to cancel, man, because you know you look at the Corona numbers and and everything's still going up." I said, "Did you look at the uh, Alabama game and see six thousand people in the stand watching football?" Shut the church down when Walmart is full. Arenas are full. The stages are full. The only reason people don't want to come here because this is not where their commitment is. And I understand that. I came around 25 and I think I shared with a great Benward. I came around 25 and got off at uh, Hollowell Parkway. Tower liquor store was packed. I looked right out in the corner, not, not because I wanted to go. I just looked at, you know, they got this little place right down behind Tower liquor store called the Blue Flame. Blue Flame was packed. Ain't nobody saying we ain't going there tonight because we're throwing up. Thank you, man. But when your commitment is with God, this is where you're going to be. Amen. amen. And I'm a firm believer we ain't got to ask, we ain't got to beg. Those who know they've been born again and love God, you're going to show up every chance you get. Because when you look at it and realize how good God has been to you, is there something you won't let you sit down on God? Amen. Now here at Great Life, we do abide by the CDC rules and regulations, uh, and the CDC has not said that anything should shut down, so the church amen. shut down, amen. 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 amen, I just think it's lack of commitment to God, and it's just my opinion, amen. amen. Thank you for Deacon Lyon, who took us back old school. Amen. There was a time when we didn't have the drums, the keyboard, the guitars, and all that, and only thing people had in the olden church were their hands and their feet. Amen. And every now and then, it's just good to go back to the old landmark. Amen. Amen. Thank you to Deacon Lyons and, and, and his team. And thank you to our sister pastor, Amen. Uh, Reverend Sharon Lyons, who is always able, willing, and ready to pray. Amen. Amen. Now, for those who are in the sanctuary, I know y'all are looking at the screen. We kind of got like a slight delay. We're going to work that out this week. But where we are now, y'all ought to get out of hand because this is y'all first time seeing that. And I'm going to continue to tell Brittany Life that, that every time y'all come here, my goal is to let you all see your tithing dollars at work. Amen. Amen. And every now and then you ride, you'll see a sign that says, Ten is at work, meaning your tax dollars. Uh, my job as a pastor is to let you all see that what you all give, we'll put it to good use. Amen. 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 That is enough of my talking. Let me thank all those who are watching or uh, via Facebook Live. Uh, some YouTube, some Instagram, uh, and we're going to get our website back on the camera soon. Uh, the system we bought, we are able to go directly to Facebook, uh, Instagram, and YouTube. So we're just kind of working out the little fine details right now. But we're trying, trying to take bring life as well for as we can get the amen. amen. If you're in the church tonight or if you're watching online, we ask that you turn with us to the book of Luke, chapter 17. 
the book of Luke, chapter 17, one of the gospel writers. Right after uh, Mark, you'll find Luke. Luke chapter 17. And we're going to look at two verses tonight. Or two verses that I think are very, very uh, interesting. Two verses that, that, that should be preached tonight. Uh, the book of Luke chapter 17, verses 15 and 16. Uh, when you found this, amen. amen. From the book of Luke chapter 15, 17, uh, verses 15 and 16, you'll find these words. But one of them, seeing that he was healed, returned, and with a loud voice gave glory to God. He fell with his face to his feet, thanking him, and he was a Samaritan. Right. Verse number 15. But one of them, when he saw that he was healed when he saw that a change had taken place in his life when he saw that things were no longer the same look at what he did the bible said that that he returned in other words he went back to jesus and he thanked him in a loud voice that is our text and from that text tonight we like to use as a thought when i look back i can't help but give god the praise when I look back, I can't help but give God the praise. If there's anything that, that all of us ought to do every now and then, every now and then, all of us ought to take a minute or two to look back. I understand that we are living in the 21st century. I understand that we're moving in, in a rapid pace of life where everything is, is fast, fast, and nobody will ever want to get behind. Yeah. But every now and then, it's good to, to look back. Amen. You see, on everybody's car, we have what we call rearview mirrors. And on every car, every truck, every automobile, even motorcycles. Motorcycles have a, a right rearview mirror and a left rearview mirror. Amen. All cars have what we call the center mirror. Those mirrors are there for particular reasons. Amen. Those mirrors are there for you to look back to see what's behind you or what's on the side of you. Amen. There is no way you could ever drive your car. Well, if you do, I don't want to ride with you. If you can drive your car and never look back to see what's behind you, something is wrong. Amen. But we have those mirrors there so we can see what's behind us, what we have left, and what we have already overcome. And I share with you all tonight that life is the identical same way. Uh -huh. Every now and then in life, you ought to check your rearview mirror to see what's behind you. Uh -huh. And if we look tonight, most of us wouldn't have to look up. Uh -huh. Because when you look at where we were in January 1st of 2021, you got to admit, when you look in your rearview mirror, God has brought us from a mighty long way. Uh -huh. When you look in your rearview mirror, you ought to see some 2021. Now you'll never see those things if you never take time to, to look back. Amen. If there's anybody who ever in their life ought to, ought to take time to look back, it is the African American. Amen. You see, because when we look at ourselves, we will have to admit that, that, that God has been good to us. Amen. God has brought us from a mighty, mighty long way. Amen. And every now and then, it's just good to, to look back to see from which you come. You see, that was a time when, when we couldn't drive Cadillacs. We had, had to operate out of cotton sacks. But, but when you look at how far God has brought us, you got to admit tonight that, that God has come, brought us from a mighty long way. And, and when you look back, there ought to be something in your life that, that make you give God the praise. Amen. I, I, I look at y'all tonight, y'all looking good. And those who I got close to, you're smelling good. Amen. Amen. I was sure tonight that when we left home, didn't nobody have to check the wood burning stove to make sure there wasn't too much wood in there. For we all had thermostats on the wall that we could just turn it down and turn the heat down. When you look nobody in here tonight, I don't think you had to go to the well to draw water to take a bath in. Nobody had to draw water out of the well 
to drink. We all could go to the bus and, and, and turn the water on and, and turn the water off. I share with you tonight that, that when we look back, we can't help but give God the praise. Because some of us know about that little old house that they had a pot burn up there. Some of us know about that and what we call the outhouse. Ain't nobody going to an outhouse. We all got these classic restrooms now to where some of y'all restrooms got telephones and TVs. You live in upscale if you got all that. But when you look back at how far God has brought us, God has been good to us. Amen. And it's amazing that there are those tonight who, who still won't look back out of all that God has brought them from. And you still won't give God the praise. Amen. But I'm a firm believer tonight that, that when you look at what, what this world and this nation has, has been through from 2019 to 2021, something wrong with you if you don't give God the praise tonight on this last night of the year. Amen. All Corona 19 snatched their life. Amen. Then Delta came and took some of them. Now we got a new one out, and it's, it's taking people life. And God still got you here, Amen. and you won't give God the praise out of all that you've seen Him do, out of all that He's brought you through. When you look at the milk at the what, not what God brought the church through, but when you, as an individual, take time to look at what God has done for you. Forget what he's done for me, but, but every now and then your praise ought to be personal. Yes. Amen. I, I understand we have what for what we call corporate prayer. Uh -huh. And I'm okay with corporate prayer. And, and, and then there are those who have what we call prayer partners, and y'all get on the prayer lines and y'all pray together, and I'm okay with that. But every child of God ought to have your personal prayer with God. Y'all do some things that God has done in your life that you ain't told nobody else. Don't nobody know about it but you and God. And, and when you think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you, your soul ought to cry out, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for bringing me over. Talk to me, somebody. When I look back, I can't help but give God the praise. Yes. And if we be honest tonight, we, we don't have to look back three, four years. Amen. Somebody went through some mess in December of 2021 Amen. that God brought you through. Amen. What he brought you through in 2021 is enough to give him some praise tonight. Amen. That if you got on the dangerous highway and get no hurt on the danger come upon you, that's enough to give God some praise for. If you went to the doctor and got a bad report and God still got breath in your lungs, that's enough to give God praise for tonight. But when I look back, I can't help. Amen. But give God the praise. Amen. God has been too good to all of us. Amen. For us not to give God some praise. Amen. So you got to understand tonight that God made us to give him praise. Amen. God created us to, to worship him. And all that means is that all of us are worshipers. Amen. I understand we have a praise team here at Great in the Life. But even if you never make it up on the pulpit to on the praise team, that shouldn't stop you from giving God some praise. <laughs> a praise team shouldn't stop you from giving God the praise. But when you look at how good God has been to you and you alone, Amen. that's enough to give God some praise. Amen. In our text tonight, we we deal with a man, but, but I got to set the stage up to let you all understand how this man got to Jesus to give Jesus some praise. Yeah. For when you read the book of Luke chapter 17 uh, verse 11, the Bible says that as Jesus was, was traveling to Jericho uh -huh. he passed between Samaria and Galilee. Mm -hmm. Now understand, verse 11 said that as he left Jerusalem, Jerusalem he passed through Samaria and Galilee. In other words, he, he wasn't quite in Samaria and he wasn't quite in Galilee. He was somewhere in between. And every now and then, if you ain't careful, you'll find yourself in between. You know, you you, you kind of in between paydays. You got enough money, but you ain't quite got enough money. You, you in between paydays, and if payday come on and roll around, you can make it just a little while longer. Talk to me, somebody. You, you know, some people in between relationships, you kind of in and you kind of <laughs> Some folks are kind of 
Well, they said they kind of married. They, well, I am, but I ain't. No, if you got that paper, you either talk to me somebody. Amen. Amen. Ain't no in between right now. But the Bible said that Jesus was, was in between Samaria and Galilee. Well. And while he was in between Samaria and Galilee, the Bible says, as he entered a village, there were, there were ten men who had leprosy. Amen. Leprosy in, in biblical days was a skin disease where the skin turned white. Amen. And when any time anybody had leprosy, they were considered to be unclean. Amen. And if you were unclean in biblical days, you could no longer live in the city. You had to live outside the city. Amen. And when I looked at this, I understood that, that when people had leprosy, they had to be what we call quarantine. Now talk to me somebody. Amen. You see, this coronavirus is quarantine a lot of folks that, that you got two people living in a house one got the virus and one don't. You got to live apart. Yeah, Can't hold hands. Can't look at TV together. Can't even sit at the same dining room table together. Because you got the quarantine. These 10 men, because they had leprosy, had to quarantine themselves from the rest of the city. The Bible said, the Bible said that as Jesus was traveling from Jerusalem to Samaria, he came to a certain village. And, and, and I tell my members all the time that. That when you read the Bible and it don't give a name, insert your name. Amen. So let's just say tonight that, that this village was Atlanta. Amen. Because there's a whole lot of sick people in Atlanta. Amen. There's a whole lot of people going through stuff in Atlanta. Amen. There's a whole lot of people quarantined now in Atlanta. Amen. The Bible said that, that as he entered a certain village, 10 men with leprosy met him. The Bible said, let me go ahead and prove my point to show y'all they were quarantining. Look at what the Bible said. The Bible said, and they they met him and stood at a distance. Amen. Amen. Can't y'all see COVID-19 all in this right here? Amen. First of all, they're quarantining because they can't live in the city. Amen. Now they meet Jesus, and everybody know I, our goal is to someday meet Jesus. Yeah. Our goal is to someday to get close enough to Jesus so that we can touch Jesus. Yeah. But these ten men, they had to talk to Jesus from a distance. Look at the Bible right here. I'm not making this up. The Bible says they stood at a distance and raised their voice, saying, "Jesus, have mercy on us." You would think. That since these ten men had leprosy, they would ask for healing. That, 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 that's what you would think. But rather than asking for Jesus to heal them, these ten men asked for mercy. Pastor Walker, can you tell us tonight, why is it that these ten men asked for mercy and not asked for healing? Because no doubt at some point these ten men had heard something about Jesus. No doubt they had heard that, that one day he met a woman who had his blood and, and she he dried up her issue. Amen. No doubt that one day they heard that Jesus took two fish and five loaves of bread and fed five thousand. No doubt tonight these men had to have heard something about Jesus. Amen. Because when they saw him, they cried with a loud voice, Jesus, have mercy on us. I need y'all to get this here. You got to see the night where these ten men were together. Amen. They had the same condition. They was in the identical same boat. And they stuck together. How do you know they stuck together, Pastor Walker? I'm going to show you. Because they said, Jesus, have mercy on us. Amen. See, it would have showed distance if they one of them would have said, Lord, have mercy on me. Amen. Me makes it personal. Amen. But us makes it inclusive. Because all these men want to be healed. All these men want to be delivered. So when they met Jesus, the Bible said they, they cried out with a loud voice, Jesus, have mercy on us. Amen. And if there's anything this world needs, we need mercy. Amen. We walk around asking for cars. We walk around asking for houses. We walk around asking for gold change. We walk around asking for Gucci, Gucci, Dio, Gucci, but what we really need is mercy. Talk to me, somebody. These ten men asked for mercy. The Bible said, the Bible, the Bible said that, that, that when he saw them, get this, get this, get this, this is, this is important. When he saw them, 
When Jesus saw these ten men with an issue, when Jesus saw these ten men with a sickness, when Jesus saw these ten men with a suffering, the Bible says in verse 12, when he saw them, he told them, go show yourselves to the priest. Wait a minute, time out, time out, time. wait a minute, time out, time out. These men tell Jesus to have mercy on them. You would think Jesus would have, have pronounced them clean. You would have thought that Jesus would have made mud, made sand, rubbed on them. You would have thought that, that he would have told them to go and wash. But they come to Jesus, and y'all get this, Jesus send them away. I'm not looking at it. It's right here in verse 12. When he, he saw their condition. He saw what they were going through. And they asked for mercy, but Jesus sent them away. Amen. Can you imagine you going to Jesus and he sends you away? Can you imagine you suffering? You at a low point in your life? You need a healing? You need deliverance. You need a word from the Lord and he sends you away. That's why like you coming to me as your pastor asking for me, you, bro, walk up, if you don't mind, can you pray for me? And I'll tell you, go to CVS and ask the clerk to pray for you. Amen. Amen. Do you know how, how, how wrong y'all would look at me? Do you know how y'all would talk about me? Do you know how y'all would feel about me if you came to your pastor? Ask me for something that you know I could do. You know I could pray for you, but rather than praying for you, I send you away. Amen. Amen. These men asked Jesus for mercy because they knew that what they needed only he could give. Amen. And, 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 and he sends <laughs> he sent them away. Amen. He says, go show yourself to the priest. Amen. Now, Amen. If, if you're not a Bible scholar, you would think that when Jesus tells them to go show yourself to the priest, he didn't want to be bothered with them. Because y'all do know whenever we don't want to be bothered with somebody, we will quickly dismiss you. When we don't want to fool with you, we will quickly send you away. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. These men go to Jesus and, and he tells them to go show yourself to the priest. But let me tell y'all why he did it. First thing you got to understand about God, God is a God of order. Amen. God is a God of structure. And in biblical days, anytime you had leprosy, the priest is the one who had to pronounce you clean. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. So it wasn't that Jesus was sending them away. What they didn't understand is that when they asked for mercy, Jesus had already healed them. But because Jesus didn't want to go over the priest, because if he had went over the priest, he would have been out of order. Amen. Jesus would never, the Lord would never be out of order. So yes, he gave them mercy. Yes, he healed them. But the priest is the one who had pronounced them healed. Amen. So that they could go back home to their families. Amen. The Bible said, the Bible said that, 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 that when he saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priest. And while they were going, they were cleansed. Wait a minute. As they they going, they, 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 they got leprosy, they got a disease, they sick, they see Jesus, they ask Jesus for mercy, Jesus sent them away. Watch what they did. Rather than complaining, they obeyed the word of the Lord. Amen. Talk Walker. Do you know that that, that, that all the time our, our deliverance is in our obedience to the word of God? Amen. That our deliverance is in us being obedient to the word of God? Amen. That you getting what you asked for? Maybe tonight, maybe the reason you didn't get what you wanted in 2021 is because you were not obedient to the word of God. Amen. Talk to me somebody. Amen. So you got to understand the Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Jesus told these ten men, all ten of them, he says, 
Go show yourself to the priest. Now let me tell y'all what we don't see. We don't see where they argued with the Lord. Amen. Amen. We don't see where they wasted time trying to figure out, should we go show ourselves to the priest? I mean, he, Jesus, surely he could have healed us. Surely he could have delivered us. But when here Jesus is, we go to Jesus and Jesus sent us away. The Bible said that, that Jesus tells him to go show yourself to the priest. Watch this here. The Bible says, and as they went, they were healed. Amen. As they went, they were cleansed. Amen. As they went, they were delivered. Amen. Well, what gave them healing? What gave them deliverance? What made them whole? Their obedience to the word of the Lord. Because if they had never went, they would have never been healed. If they had never went, they never would have been made whole. The Bible said, but as they went, they were healed. As they went, they, they were clean. Look, look at it, look at it, look at it. They got leprosy, they sick. They got leprosy, they down. They got leprosy, they can't be around their family. So they asked Jesus, Jesus, have mercy on us. Jesus, go show yourself to the priest. And, and, and as they went, can't y'all see the men walking together? All of them walking, all of them got the same thing. All of them sick, all of them can't be around their family. And as they're walking and talking, something is happening. As they're on their way to the temple, something is changing. Can I help y'all out tonight? That the more you walk with the Lord, most of the stuff ought to change. Amen. That the more you do what the Lord tells you, the more there'll be a difference in your life. Amen. The Bible said, as they went, they were cleansed. This shows us tonight that, that their cleansing was in them being obedient to the word of the Lord. Amen. I'm a firm believer tonight that, 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 that this world can be cleansed of all these viruses if we start being obedient to the word of the Lord. Because the Bible does say that if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven and heal their land. The land ain't going to be healed if we start humbling ourselves. You got too many people filled up in pride, fucked up in pride. You got people who won't turn from their wicked ways, and you think God don't hear us until we become word of God, nothing is going to change. The Bible said, the Bible says, right here, right here, right here, the Bible says, and as they went, they were cleansed. Mm -hmm. But, but one of them, understand me, now look, look, look at your Bible, but verse number uh, 12 shows us that it was 10. Mm -hmm. 10 asked for mercy. Right. 10 was told to go show themselves to the priest. Ten was delivered. Not one, but ten. The Bible said right here in verse number 15, but one of them. Point number one. I know y'all papers say it doesn't take but one. But doesn't don't sound good for preaching. Can y'all let me use don't tonight? Sometimes it don't take but one. Sometimes it don't take but one person to call on the name of the Lord. Sometimes it don't take but one person to get delivered. Sometimes it don't take but one person to tell God how much you love him. In the family to pray for the whole family and the whole family get delivered. Talk to me, somebody. The Bible said, but one of them, one of them, when he saw that he was clean, in other words, he looked at his hands and they looked new. Looked at his feet and they here to talk to me, somebody. Sometimes when God has been good to you, you got to at least learn to tell God thank you. When God had delivered you to see what God do, God will raise up off our sick baby. And you get the audacity not to come back to tell God thank you. Don't let God bless you and you don't tell God thank you. Don't let God deliver you off crack cocaine and you don't tell God thank you. Don't let God deliver you from alcohol and you don't tell God thank you. The Bible said that one of them when he when he saw that that he was renewed. When he saw that he was healed. When he saw that a change had come over his life. Look at what the Bible said. The Bible said, but, but one of them, seeing that he was healed, 
returning with a loud voice giving God praise. Amen. I don't know how in the world that, that God could bless us and we don't give God the praise. We get a new car. You want to tell somebody, y'all need to come. Y'all need to come see this ride out of that If it had not been for God on your side, you wouldn't have an automobile. You wouldn't even have a motor car. If God had been good to you, you ought to at least give him the praise of what he did. Amen. You want to have a housewarming party so everybody can see the new house. Yeah. All right, boy, I, I worked overtime to get him. No, God worked overtime to give you that. Amen. Give God some praise for what God has already done. The Bible said that. But one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he returned. In other words, he went back. And I'm a firm believer tonight that there are a whole lot of folks who need to go back. I'm not talking back home. You need to go back to church. You need to go back to the Lord. You need to go back to the one that saved you. You need to go back to the one that delivered you. The Bible said one of them, when he saw that he was healed, went back, praising God. And allowed for us. I need y'all to get this. I need y'all to get this here. This man, when he looked at his life and what he had already been through, he didn't come back with you. Now y'all mess, y'all just messing me up. Y'all got them little cute praises. <laughs> Ain't no way to worry. I stand in the church and act like I'm gonna clap my hand. The reason I stand here and sweat in my best suit so y'all sat there and don't say amen, because I know how good God been to me. And I'm gonna give you the praise. I don't care what you said out there and me. God has been good to me. And when I look back, I can't help but give God the praise. Point number two, God is worthy of our praises. Maybe you don't know it tonight. Maybe you don't feel it tonight. Return and a loud voice giving God the praise. Imagine how God would feel tonight if you opened your mouth and gave God some praise. Imagine how God would feel tonight if you gave God some praise for the roof over your head. Imagine how God would feel if you gave God some praise for the clothes that you got on your back. Imagine how God would feel if you gave him some praise for the food that's on your table. Imagine how God would feel if you gave your praise tonight for the blood that's running warm in your veins. But wait, but one, do y'all know it don't take but one of us, uh, uh, G and L Unites? Yeah, y'all don't know that with y'all. Y'all G and L Unites. It don't take but one G and L Unites to give God some praise. It don't take but one G and L Unites to tell God thank you. It don't take but one G and L Unites to look back for what you came. That when he got to Jesus, not only did he give God some praise, the Bible said this man fell to his face at the feet of Jesus. Maybe this man knew something we don't know. For the Bible said that every knee must bow and every tongue shall be faith. That Jesus is Lord. This man looked over his life and saw how good God had been to him. And he ran to Jesus fell on his face and praise and, and worship him. That kind of whole lot of us out. Because man, can, can I holler at the brother for a minute? Yes, sir. Brother, you know good well you ain't finna fall on your knees in a nice suit you got on. Amen. You is not finna get no holes in them knees. No, you is not. You is not finna mess up that nice tie that you done tied. No, you is not. Sisters, I know y'all ain't gonna fall because you know, first of all, you dress already too short that shouldn't even be up in church. We know you ain't gonna fall on your knees and give God some praise. Talk to me, somebody. This man lost his identity. He forgot about who he was. He went back and gave God some praise. Do you know that when we come up in here, we've got to deny ourselves? You got to forget about 
about you who you are. Forget about you are the president and CEO of or the corporation. Forget about you are, well, I'm the head in charge and don't nothing move. Hey, listen, when you come to church, all of us are the same. Amen. Amen. That when we come to church, the garbage collector can sit next to the doctor. Amen. The person who works at Winners can sit next to the person who works at the hospital. Because we all are the same when we come up to Jesus. This man ran to Jesus, fell on his face, and worshiped. Amen. If what God wants more than your money, God wants your worship. More than I'm trying to help somebody, and then they are the church need them, but God don't need them. More than your time, He needs your worship. He needs your praise. He needs you to come back to Him every now and then and tell Him how good He is. The Bible says one of them ran back, fell on his face, and thanked God, and and He was a Samaritan. Point number three: At some point, we all gonna have to bow to His feet. Don't fool yourself now. I don't care how cute you are. I don't care how cocoa ball fine you think you are. I don't care how long your hair is. At some point, we all gonna have the ball at the feet of Jesus. And I know some of y'all walk around. I don't buy it, no man. But at some point, you're gonna have to buy it. God, talk to me, somebody. At some point, you're gonna have to get out on your knees and tell God how good he is. At some point, we all got to buy it. Ducks got to buy, cows got to buy, lizards got to buy. Everybody got to bow to God. Amen. This man, when he looked at his life and looked at what God has done, the Bible said he ran back, fell on his face, and he fell at the feet of Jesus. Amen. See, you walk around here buying everybody else, and it, it, it just it just do something to me. When I see folk bowing to, to athletes, don't let Nicki Minaj put out a new video. Y'all joke, but we'll go plumb crazy. Hey. Don't, don't let one of the Falcon players come up in church. Y'all just go plumb crazy. Hey. But what would you do if the Lord walked up in church? Hey. Who would your praise look like if Jesus walked up in church? Who would your sound be like if God came and sat right next to you? This man, when he looked at how the Lord had changed his life, how do you know his life had changed? 11 said the man had leprosy. Hey. Jesus told him to go show himself to the priest. And when he saw that his leprosy was cleansed, when he saw that he had been delivered from that disease, he went back and gave the Lord some praise. And I would have one or two people in the house tonight who you know you've been delivered. You know you've been delivered. You can't stand in this house tonight and not give God some praise if you've been delivered. And he was a Samaritan. Now, you, why is that important? Because Samaritan and Jews have no dealings. I'm, I'm going somewhere. Hang with me now. Samaritan and Jews had no dealings. Amen. In other words, they didn't. They didn't coincide. They didn't. They didn't get along. But but this man forgot about what they what they used to have. I mean, just cause my granddad didn't like Jesus, they ain't got nothing new. Me like Jesus. You, you, you know how it is that if your mama don't like somebody, you don't like them, they ain't did nothing to you. Amen. you. Listen, your mama don't like anime, you don't like anime. Amen. You don't need no anime. Yeah, but my mama didn't like it. Amen. That was when your mama. This man forgot about his ancestors not liking Jew. Forget this. See, anytime anybody help you, you at least ought to tell them thank you. Amen. If somebody bring you a glass of water, you ought to at least tell them thank you. If somebody give you a ride, you ought to at least tell them God has done anything for you tonight. When you look back over your life in 2021, if God has done anything for you, I'm talking about if he didn't give you a job paying them a minimum wage. And some of y'all really, if God talked to me, the way some of y'all got over on these stimulus checks, you know you ought to be thanking God. The way some of y'all get over on these food stamps, you ought to, uh, I, I, I hear you. You're welcome. You mad at that. You mad at that. Forget it. Welfare was never set up for us to live like it is, but now some of us are doing fairly well on welfare. Talk to me, somebody. You ought to at least give God some praise tonight. If God has done anything for you, you ought to at least tell God because the Lord knows what He's done for you. Yeah. Talk to me, somebody. Pastor, walk 
people may never know. Yeah. But God knows exactly what he's done for you. Yeah. Can I prove my point tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Look at point, verse number 17. Then Jesus said, uh -huh. wait a minute. Mm -hmm. One, look at it. Then Jesus said, uh -huh. one down 10. Uh -huh. Amen. Wait a minute, hold up.
to be the one that surrender. Say, Lord, I surrender all. All that I got belongs to you. My home belongs to you. My children belong to you. This church belongs to you. I want to be the one that let God know how good he is, how bad he is, how special he is, and how unique he is. Will anybody join me in being the one? Don't let me be the one by myself. I need somebody else to get on my team. Let's thank God. Let's worship God. Let's The man said, yeah, he said, where now? If you ain't telling God, thank you. He's concerned about you. Amen. If you haven't thanked God for what God has done for you, he's concerned about you. Amen. Because when you look at it, the nine went on about their way. There's a whole lot of folks who God has blessed royally, and they go on about their way. They refuse to go in the church. They refuse to live up holy hand. They refuse to tell God, thank you. But sometimes, you got to lead the majority and join the minority. Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. You got more going for you than you got going against you. Don't always fall the crowd. Sometimes you got to stand alone. I'll stand with the Lord if I got to stand by myself. I'll pray the Lord if I got to pray them all by myself. I'll sing for the Lord if I got to sing all by myself. I'll shout for the Lord if I got to shout all by myself. This man left the night. And Jesus asked the one, Where are the nine? No man stands on the night. No man is alone. The greater life is our job to worry and pray about those who are lost. Because can I help y'all out? I, I, I'm not mad at all of us got some lost folks in our family. Amen. Oh, you, you mean Red Walker? Red Walker? You the pastor? You mean you got lost folks in your family? You don't go away. I got them, you got them too. And it's our job to, to reach out to the nine. Because Jesus asked this man, wasn't that telling y'all? Man said, yeah, Jesus went nine. Why did he ask? Because he was concerned. Because he knew what he had did for him. And tonight, the Lord know what he did for you in 2021. Amen. In 2022, God is waiting on you to tell him thank you. He is waiting on you to give him praise for what he's already done. The Bible said we are made in the image of God. And in his likeness are we made. Can I break that down a little bit further? Nobody in here want to do for somebody and they don't tell you thank you. I, I don't care. Now I know y'all be talking about, well honey, what I do? I do it from my heart. Stop lying. Now you don't. Ain't nobody, you ain't going to let nobody your money and they don't tell you thank you. You ain't gonna let nobody stay at your house three, four months. They get them a place, leave, and you gonna be mad. But since we're made in the image of God, if He has done something for us, don't you think He wants us to tell Him thank you? Yes. If He got blood running warm in your veins, He wants us to tell Him thank you. If we got roof over our head, clothes on our back, food on our table, He wants us to tell Him thank you. And when I look back, I can't help. I can't help but give God the praise. In 2010, when we first started Greater Life, Deacon Rasta Cooper, y'all remember, we had just started the church. I get a black toilet in my lungs. I'm in a hospital 19 days. Didn't let nobody come see me but Robert Rouse. When I look back how God broke me off my sick bed, I don't think I'm going to be a fool and not stand here and tell God, thank you. I'm going to give God the praise for the blood.
that tonight, as we get ready to cross over from 2021 to 2022, that if we praise God and praise God right, somebody in your family, somebody on your job could be healed, somebody could be delivered, somebody could be restored, somebody could be refreshed, but those who are here right now, because that one man was in front of Jesus, and that one man had to give him the praise. So tonight, I encourage all of us to come to the altar. Come on, come on, come to the altar because tonight is a night that we praise God. I understand there's a virus, y'all can do social distance, but, but we still got to give God the praise. We, we still got to tell God thank you. We still got to let God know we honor him, we magnify him, we worship him, and we adore him. If you don't want to hold hands tonight, I, I understand. I'm all right with that. But we may never get this chance again. We may never get this chance again to come down to God and tell God thank you. Tonight we come giving ourselves away. Tonight we come giving ourselves away. Tonight we come giving all that we have to God. Right where you are, all hands by our last clothes. Dear Lord God, here we are. We took time out tonight, Lord. Yes. This last day of the year yes. to come tell you thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we realize that we didn't worship you and we didn't praise you the way we should in 2021. Lord, you brought us down to these last couple minutes of 2021. Yes. And tonight, Lord, we're going to use everything that we have in us yes. to come back and tell you thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we realize that 2021, some of us had high mountains, yes. some of us had low valleys. Some of us find ourselves on our bed of affliction. Yes, Lord. But through it all, Lord, you brought us. Yes. And there's no way, Lord, we could let this year in yes. without coming back to tell you thank you. Thank you Lord, Lord, we come back to tell you that we appreciate you yes. for healing our bodies. Yes, we thank you, Lord, for thank touching you. our families. And Lord, we understand that the family ain't quite what it should be, but, yes. but Lord, the family is in your hands. Yes. Lord, we come tonight as we close out another year, Lord, we come down because we simply want to tell you thank you. Thank and if you don't do anything else, Lord God, you already done enough. You. you blessed us when we weren't worth blessing, and you promised when we weren't worth bringing. But tonight, Lord, with all that we have, yes. we come to your altar. Yes. Yes. And just like this man came bowing at your feet, yes. tonight, Lord, we come put it all at your feet. Yes. Whatever it is, yes. we put at your feet. The anger, we put it at your feet. The trauma, we put it at your feet. The lying, we put it at your feet. The decision, we put it at your feet. Lord, we come tonight bowing at your altar simply to give you the praise. Because, Lord, you've been good to us. You've been better than us than we could ever beat ourselves, Lord. You didn't have to do it, but you did, Lord. You didn't have to save us, but you did, Lord. You didn't have to keep us, but you did, Lord. You didn't have to deliver us, but you did, Lord. You didn't have to renew us, but you did, Lord. And tonight we come saying thank you. Thank you. For praying us from a mighty long way. Tonight, Lord, as we stand in thy presence, we didn't come to beg. We didn't come to borrow. We didn't come to ask for anything. We come to give you your praise. That if a man who had leprosy could go back and praise you, tonight we come back to praise you. Because we may never get this opportunity again. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know you hold tomorrow. And tonight, Lord, we give you all that we got. We give you all that we got. Everything that's in us and everything that's out of us, Lord, Lord, we give it to you. Right now, Lord. Right now, Lord. Right now, Lord. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Not in Mary's name, but in the name of Jesus. Not in Buddha's name, but in the name of Jesus. This is Azura's prayer. And every heart said, Amen. 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 And Amen. Can we put them hold of those hands? Let's give God some praise. It's 2022.
He knows what's ahead of you. I need everybody to, in your own words, meditate on God right now. See, see the Bible said one of them, when he saw he was ill, came back. There is somebody in here, you are that one that God is, is touching on right now. If you're in here tonight and you know you are, we actually come now. Don't, don't, don't let this be the opportunity you pass up on giving your life to God. Okay, we're going to do it this way because I, I know what I'm doing. All these about the last story. If you're in here tonight and you know that you, just raise your hand. I'm going to see you. Amen. I, I, I know from God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The Spirit don't lie. Amen. And to the person who just raised your hand, you and I came together at the church. Amen. I felt your spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Amen.